Hello, doers, and welcome back. My name is Ignacio. Now, today, we're going to take a closer look at how to handle delivery charges inside of Odoo. Now, here at the world-famous Stealthywood HQ, we enjoy having a bit of flexibility when it comes to what we charge our customers for their deliveries. Now, we either base our delivery fees on a fixed price, or we base them on a set of rules. It all depends on what products need to be shipped. For example, we typically charge our customers a fixed price to ship any small non-furniture items. But when delivering bigger, heavier items, we're going to charge different amounts based on the weight because it costs more money to ship heavier items. Makes sense, right? Now, lucky for us, Odoo lets us customize our delivery prices to fit any unique business needs. Plus, Odoo has seamless integrations with major shipping services like FedEx, UPS, and local postal services, thus ensuring every delivery is quick, easy, and reliable. So, enough chit chat, let's hop on in so I can actually deliver a quality lesson about delivery prices. See what I did there? Deliver, nah, it doesn't matter. Hop in. Alrighty, once again, let's start on our sales dashboard. Now, before we do anything, we're gonna wanna make sure that we have the delivery methods feature activated. And to do that, we'll navigate through our settings page via the configuration menu and settings. And once that, that loads, we're gonna scroll down over here to we're at the shipping area. And you'll notice delivery methods right there and we're all ready to go. Now here you'll also find all these shipping services that can be integrated with Odoo. And if you want to learn more about those, be sure to check out our inventory tutorials and documentation. But for now, let's take a closer look at a general shipping configuration, shall we? Now in order to do that, we could either click on the shipping methods internal link or go up here to configuration and shipping methods. So here we see a collection of all of the shipping methods we have configured in our database. And as you can see, I have a bunch of integrated delivery methods ready to go. But most of them aren't published, as you can tell, over here by this column. Now this means they aren't activated yet, and they also can't be used. So be sure to publish any shipping method you plan on using. Now no worries, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Now first, let's create a new shipping method. Now to do that, we're actually going to select, as you guessed it, new up here. Alright, now we need a name. So... In our case, we're going to name this one Fixed Delivery Price. Now up next, we have the website field. And in this case, you can basically select the website the shipping method should apply to. Personally, I want this method to apply to all of my websites. So I'm going to leave this blank because that's the only method that allows us to do that. Now then we have the provider field, which lets us choose who is going to make the delivery for us. And if you select it, it allows you to pick some different ones. So in our case, for now, if... I choose one of my integrated shipping services like FedEx, for example. I'd select FedEx from the list, and then it changes stuff. I would then need to add my company-specific shipping information related to the shipping service down here. Now, if we go back up here to Provider, I'm going to show you something else. Then, in my case, let's assume if I select Pickup in Store, stuff changes. Then my customers would have the option to pick up their items in person. However, it should be noted that this option will only be available if the on-site payments and picking feature is activated inside of the website application setting. So be sure to keep that in mind, oh doers. Anyways, here at Stealthywood, we want to charge a fixed price to deliver small, non-furniture products to our customers. So let's set the provider field to fixed price, because that's what we said earlier. All right, beneath the provider field is the company field, where we pick the company for the shipping method. And that's if it's supposed to apply to a specific company, if we're working in a multi-company environment. However, just like we did with the website field, I want this to apply to all my companies, so I'm gonna leave that blank as well. Now moving on, oh doers. We have, in our case, the delivery product field over here on the top right. Now the delivery product is what's listed on the order line of the sales order for this shipping method, so that the customer will see this as the name of the delivery charge. For example, I'll just call this, in our case, we're going to type in delivery. And why would we do that? Well, because in our case, we're going to create that because this is going to be a new delivery thing. Now, up next, we can actually choose to add a margin on rate to the shipping price if necessary. But in my case, I'm actually going to leave that as is for now. After that, we also have the option to offer free shipping if the order exceeds a certain dollar amount. So if we want to check off this box next to free, if order is above a certain amount, you'll see a new amount thing appears right there. We can enter the designated amount. Like in my case, 420. 420 is a good number. It's a pretty good deal. 
Now let's direct our attention over here to the pricing tab that we have over here. Now I'm going to set the fixed price for our smaller items and let's go with a lucky number seven. Perfect. That should be enough to cover our shipping costs. Hopefully, knock on wood. All right, moving over to the destination availability tab. We can choose which country, states, or specific zip codes that can apply to this particular shipping method. Again, if we leave these blank, they will apply to all options available in the respective categories. And since we want all of our stealthy wood stands around the world to enjoy the same fixed price for smaller items, I'm going to leave these blank. Once again, it's a method that applies it to all of them. And we're going to move on to the description tab. All right, here we can add a, well, a custom description that will be displayed online. And at the bottom of sales orders, whenever we confirm any of those in emails and stuff. Alrighty, when we're happy with how everything looks, the only thing left to do is if we want the shipping method to be usable by our customers, we just have to publish it. So, to do that, all we have to do is click this smart button up here. And when we click it, the status will change from unpublished in red to published in green. And that's it, oh doers. Alrighty, let's make a new shipping method this time. And this one's going to be based on a couple rules, so we're going to name it rule-based delivery. For our delivery product, I've renamed the delivery product from before to special delivery to make it easier to find. And our provider in this case is based on rules. Perfect. Now everything is done. So let's go down here to pricing and we're going to add a line. Now once that we do that, you'll notice we can see that the condition field and everything is an equation for defining our delivery pricing rules for the shipping method. Now this mini equation can allow us to configure things in a number of ways. I could choose whether I want to use something such as weight, volume, and volume, price, or quantity as well for the items in the order. It should be noted that whatever factor is chosen here, it must be configured on the product forms as well. If it isn't, then the rule simply won't work properly. For example, if weight and volume is chosen, then a weight and a volume must be designated on product forms in order for things to work smoothly. That makes sense. Now for now, I'm going to leave it on weight since it costs our company money to ship heavier things. With that in mind, let's say that if the weight of the order is greater than, so we're going to swap this over there, or equal to, I don't know, let's put 30 for the weight. Greater than 30 and then in our case our delivery cost is supposed to be 20 plus whatever that weight is. And as you can see, in addition to a fixed delivery cost, I could choose to have the cost be a multiple of the weight or factor as well. Now to do that, I'd simply add an amount to the second delivery cost that we have over here in this field. But for the sake of the demo, I'm going to leave it at the flat $20 delivery cost. Then we're going to hit save and new. All right. And that's because I have another rule in mind for this shipping method. In this new funky fresh create a pricing rules window that we have right now, we're going to go with something else. And it is if the weight is greater than, so we're going to go back over here, or equal to, 100 because it's another nice number then the delivery cost will be $100 so our delivery cost is just going to be 100 now if we hit save and close over here as well you'll see something else I don't have any other rules that I want to add right now but I can always come back and create some more later and now that you see that oh doers we have our special rules lined up that we have down here and they're ready to go in the pricing tab but there's one more thing I need you all to know about. When it comes to these rules, the order and sequence of them matters. That means whatever rule is first on the list is the rule that Odoo will apply first. If the rule doesn't apply to the customer's order, then Odoo will apply the next rule on the list and so on. So with that in mind, I'll switch the order of these real quick. And that's what I wanted to show you. Because I basically want the 100 rule to be at the top. And that's so that Odoo can check whether the product weighs more than 100 in that case. Then, if it doesn't, Odoo will check to see if it weighs over 30. Does that make sense? Good. Okay, now that we've got all of our rules configured and in the right order, it's time to publish it. So, we're going to select Publish again. And just like that, we're done. Now, let's see these in action. So, in order to do that, we're going to navigate back to the Sales Dashboard and select New. I'm going to put a random customer in here, Azure Interior. And let's say that they want one of our smaller non-furniture products, such as wood glue. Once that we're done with that, we're going to hit confirm on this one. Perfect. Awesome. Now let's add some shipping costs to the sales order. And we can actually do that by just hitting add shipping down here. All right. Now, which one do we want to use? In our case, we're going to use the first one we created earlier, which is fixed price. 
And once we do that, you'll notice that everything populates. The cost field is auto-generated and everything is ready. So we're going to select add. And just like that, it's there. Not only do we see the appropriate delivery price added to the sales order, but we'll see the product and description fields over here also are updated, just like we wanted. But wait a minute. What about free shipping and how we configure that? We can actually see that in action. Let's assume that Azure Interior fumbled it. They made an accounting error and they want a hundred of these. Now, you'll notice that they qualify for free shipping. And there was one more change that happened. Not only did the quantity change on here, but you'll notice now it's yellow for the delivery line as well. And the color for the update shipping also changed. So, let's put that and click it over here. Now, once we do that and we select update, we don't have to do anything there. Boom! Free shipping is done right there. Now, I want to show you one more thing. So, let's go ahead and make another one so I can show you the rule-based one. So, we're going to go back to quotation, select new, Azure Interior again. And this time around, let's assume that they want to purchase one of our heavy products, our four-person desk. We're going to select that. Perfect. Now, remember, in order for it to work properly, we need to make sure that the product has a weight configured on the product form. So, let's go double-check that with the internal link. Now, if we go over here inside of our inventory, oh no, it does not have a weight, but that's not a problem. I already know how much it weighs. It weighs about as much as I can bench press with one hand. 110 kilograms. For all my non-metric users out there, in our case, we're going to use something else, and that is going to be 240 pounds. But we're going to leave it at the 110 right there. All right, now that we're all ready to go, let's go back over here onto our sales order. So we're going to save that, back onto the new sales order, and we're going to hit Add Shipping. Now we're going to do our rule-based one, and let's see how that goes. And would you look at that this time around? You'll see that since our product weighs over 100 kilograms, Odoo has correctly added the delivery price of $100 over there. A hundo for a hundo. And that's perfect. There you have it, oh dudes and oh dudettes, as one of the other experts once said, or bro-doers. That's how you properly configure delivery prices. Thank you. Have a great night.